We're back again to do another assembly video for the long mill. Um, if you saw the one that Chris did, that one was for the 30 by 30. Over the last couple of months, since we've released the 48 by 30, it turns out that is now the most popular machine available. So I just figured, well, we might as well make a video on how to put a 48 by 30 together rather than kind of uh, taking the 30 by 30 and stitching together instructions for the 48 by 30. So uh, we're at Dennis's shop today. We are, we brought a machine for him, but we're taking the opportunity to, to put together the machine here and film the process so that we can kind of kill two birds with one stone. Uh, so if you bought a 30, sorry, a 48 by 30, it'll come in two separate boxes. You'll have the main box, which is the same as the 30 by 30, and there it is. And it'll also come with a long box, which is for extending the x-axis. So um, we'll start by opening up both of these boxes. Let's start with the, the 30 by 30 size box or the main box. I'll just put this over here. All right, so we'll just get into opening this up. So this shorter box contains um, most of the components. Um, and if you ordered stuff like the router, the um, dust shoe, and any other extras, end mills and things like that, it'll come in this box. So I'll just start pulling stuff out and you can use this as a bit of a unboxing video. So we have the Makita router, um, main uh, one of the main boxes, the box that has all the gantries, a welcome letter, welcome letter, uh, which contains a link to the resources, a uh, welcome pouch, which has the uh, um, Allen keys and the tools that you need to put the machine together, uh, the um, some stickers, the motors for the machine, and then underneath there, you will find, ah, so heavy. The box that contains all the stuff for like the rails, the rails, the feet, um, power supply, all the other fun stuff in here. So, um, yeah, so let's start with opening up. I'm gonna put the router aside because we don't need that right, right now. Um, we'll just open this up first. So here we have the X, uh, the XZ gantry assembly. We have two Y gantry plates, which are here. And these are made of quarter inch steel, laser cut steel. This is the second one. stickers and then the welcome I'll open the welcome pouch up you have a utility wrench this comes with two different sizes actually three different sizes so you can uh, crank down on a, a couple different nuts and things like that looks like they put another welcome letter in here some more stickers 
and then two Allen keys and more stickers. Yeah, that's all. And then in this box, you should find This is the uh, the long board or the controller for the machine. Which is right here. The if you order these are extra add-ons, but there's the inductive sensor kit. The auto zero touch plate. So all the accessories should be found in this big main box in here. So yeah, inductive sensor, auto zero. If you ordered any um, uh, bit kits, um, they'll be in the this box as well. An e-stop. The Z-axis motor mount. The router mount, which is bubble wrapped. Ooh. Router mount in the front end of it. Yeah, this 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 box has some uh, what do you call these threaded inserts. And the magnetic dust shoe. So we don't need these right away, so I'll put them back. Next, I have the motors, the NEMA 23 motors, which are like that. There's four of them in here, and the cables are in here as well. I'll put those aside for now, too. Next, we have the rail box. So you'll find uh, you'll find two of these. This is the uh, y-axis rail and inside one of the rails you'll find the lead screws in the drag chain as well in this box uh, we'll have a couple of different things Let's see if I can figure out how to open it. Oh, let's just, yeah, I'm gonna take these, the feet out here. And then we don't need this anymore. Okay, that's everything. Uh, these stickers came off. But uh, we have two uh, bags of hardware, so bolts, nuts, bearings, uh, other bits and bobs in here, and then a power supply. So yeah. So that's the first box. Um, I would suggest if you are getting the machine for the first time to open everything and check everywhere for your parts. A lot of them are packed up and uh, inside other things. So, you know, they're, they can, they're all there. They just may be hiding somewhere. Uh, before I go any further, I should probably note that if you, this today is uh, December 21st. Um, this is the first, first version of the Long Mill um, Mark II. 
uh, 48 by 30. Over time, we generally make changes to the design to improve uh, the, pro uh, the performance of the machine, to improve the uh, ease of assembly, the uh, ease of production, and things like that. So they could be changes to the parts that are being used in the assembly. If you go to the resources of the um, on our website, um, you can find the most up-to-date version of the assembly. So make sure to use the assembly manual for your assembly and use the video as a reference because we'll show how to put a lot of the things together. Uh, and if you're not sure on how things are being put together, you can use the uh, video to help you. But um, you know, maybe if you're looking at this video a year or two years from now, there may be changes to the design. So yeah, make sure to make sure to cross reference between everything. Okay, um, let's open up the second long box. I'll shimmy over some of these parts for now. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Show you guys the feet. So that the kit will also come with four of these metal feet in nice cardboard packaging. Oh yeah. So if you ordered a 48 by 30, you'll have two packages that come in the mail. Um, you'll probably either get one tracking number, uh, one master tracking number that has the information about both shipments, um, or you'll get two separate tracking numbers. Um, they might not come at exactly the same time. Usually it comes within a day of each other, but just as a warning, you know, if you're if you get one and not the other, you might just have to wait an extra couple days. All right, so more packaging. So yeah, inside this box, you'll have um, five boxes, small boxes inside, as well as the main rail. So I'll take the, so one, box one, box two, box three, box four, box five. Just as a note, some of the boxes feel pretty light so they seem empty, but they may have some stuff inside. So make sure to open all the boxes and you can use them to like put your stuff in them if they are empty. But um, yeah, sometimes people don't check if there's actually stuff inside and then they call and they say, hey, we're missing stuff. But then they actually, we tell them check the box and then it's all there. All right, here's, the big, I gotta toss this again. All right, so this is the, the main X-Rail, which is the big chunky boy. We have a T12 lead screw. Let's set this somewhere. And there's the rail itself. So yeah. 
So yeah, if you um, have a 30 by 30, it will be the same rail, just shorter. Um, so yeah. And also the, uh, the lead screw will be a different size. So the, it's only the, uh, it's only the 48 by 30 with the thicker lead screw. Cool. All right, well, that's that. Um, okay, we'll start unboxing these guys. Um, some, we, we made the packaging work for the extension kits. So if you bought an ex, if you have an old version of the long mill and you want to extend the X axis, um, some of these boxes will be filled. This one is just void. This has the um, extension cable for the router, inductive sensor extension, um, motor extension, and a longer drag chain. There you go. I'll put this back. This one, I think it's empty too. Okay, that one's empty. This one here has a couple bits of hardware, the bigger bearings the bigger coupler, uh, another Allen key set. This one has a handle because uh, the coupler is hard to tighten down. So it gives you some extra leverage as well as a big T12 nut. So these are all the hardwares for the bigger lead screw. Just as a note, um, the, the hardware used for the T8s are look very, very similar. So they're easy to get mixed up, but you'll probably end up figuring out that you need the bigger one for the bigger screw. So I think you'll probably be able to figure it out. And then lastly, we have the another hardware box. And that just has the hangers for the drag uh, for the cables and stuff. Yeah, so that's that. So I believe that's basically our unboxing. So yeah, just make sure to open all of your boxes, double check you've got everything. And um, that's basically that. So, um, Let's get into the resources part of our website, and then we'll start to show the assembly process. Hopefully this is still recording away. Yeah, it's good. So if you go to our website, which is cnc.com, S-I-E-N-C-I.com, um, you can go to our resources part um, uh, on the header go down to long mill and then go to long mill mark two and uh, just as a quick introduction this resources page covers basically everything that we feel like you need to know to get started with cnc um, we have an introduction here we have information about what a CNC router is, about cutting tools, work holding, the difference between routers and spindles, um, doing dust collection, using touch plates, making a table, goes through the software, um, the assembly process. Uh, we also have some sample projects. We have uh, assembly and use instructions for all the add-ons that we sell. Uh, we have more information about um, different things, including a 
uh, CNC issues and fixes page, which basically anytime someone comes with a problem with their machine, we'll use this as a place to put it down and explain, you know, how to troubleshoot things about your machine. Uh, we have like a glossary and then we have an advanced section which covers like um, the R open source files, details about the control board, the firmware, um, settings, stepper drivers, microstepping and things like that. So um, I would suggest that everybody, especially the ones that are getting to, into this the first time, to go through our resources and read everything because that's one of the valuable things about um, what we're doing is that we try to provide all the resources that you need to actually, you know, do the CNC stuff. So um, in our case, we'll just skip straight to the assembly part. So we'll go to assembly and then start on the unboxing part. Uh, yeah, and there's a quick introduction. So we have a couple ways that the instructions are laid out. You can go through the assembly process um, step by step on the web page, or we also provide a downloadable PDF. Because the internet is kind of spotty in the shop, we're going to download the PDF so we don't have to worry about the internet going out. And like I was saying earlier, um, the PDFs and the instruction manuals will be the most up-to-date and they'll have revisions if we can improve the process of the assembly. So I'd highly recommend that you use the paper instruction manual or the web instruction manual and use the video as a secondary reference. We'll just wait a moment to get it loaded from the interwebs. So yeah, um, we'll just read through this very quickly. Um, here's the section for the unboxing. There's a diagram of what your boxes should look like. And um, well, we just did the unboxing, so you probably got a first person view of this. In terms of tools, um, we just have the wrench and the Allen keys. Um, the only other thing you'll probably need for the assembly is a flathead screwdriver as well as a, a square Robertson bit and driver so that you can mount the uh, machine to the table. Uh, so, yep. Uh, another thing to note is that the kit comes with lots of extra parts. So if you end up with extra stuff, um, just hang on to them. You can use them for other stuff. Uh, it's just that it's usually easier to have extra stuff than not enough stuff at all. And if you're missing anything, just give us a shout through our contact form on our website and we'll help you get sorted out. We have a couple of different, uh, how do I say? icons or symbols that help kind of guide the assembly process in the manual. Um, so we'll just go through that. We have title pages for each section of the machine assembly and it's broken down into a couple different sections. We have um, a transparent and transparent part with a blue arrow. So it shows like how, what direction the part needs to go. Um, we also have arrow rotation arrows that show which way the well, how tight it should be whether if it's a red with a stop it should be tightened quite firmly and if it's a blue then it should just be snug uh, the triangle with the exclamation mark shows things that may need extra attention um, green circles add extra views for extra clarity. And then here's a diagram of uh, when we say which is the X, Y, and Z axis. Um, there's a diagram of what we're referring to. So 
yeah, that's uh, that's the first section. So we'll go into the part one, which is to assemble the X and Z. So every uh, section of the assembly shows you um, basically what parts you need, um, and it should show you which bag it will come in. So in this case, we need four Acme nuts, set screws, we need the Delrin backlash nuts, and the nylon lock locking nuts, and the M5 bolts. And as the instructions set states, we are gonna start with the um, green hardware bag. So I'm gonna dump all the parts out, out for this. I'm gonna scooch these guys over for now. So kind of a funny thing, sometimes people will mix the nylon nuts with the eccentric nuts and then they'll use all the eccentric nuts and not use any of the nylock nuts and say, oh, we don't have enough nuts. And then we have to be like, hey, we do have enough nuts. Anyways, this happens more often than you think. Okay, so first step, we'll start off with uh, putting together the brass locking nuts right, right here. So you should be able to take the little screw and start threading them in. And you just need to have them just go in a little bit. When we uh, use these later, they'll be used to keep them in place on the lead screw. So if you put them in too far, then you'll have to back them out later anyway. So yeah, don't do that. All right, so that's what it looks like. You should have four of these. So let's move on to the next step. Next, we're gonna pre-assemble the uh, Acme, Delrin, Ac Delrin anti-backlash nuts. These are, a lot of people like to call these robots because they kind of look like robots. So let's, uh, let's Add some parts to the robots. So the first thing we'll do is pop the um, nylon locking nuts into the, the Delrin nut. Uh, there's two hexagonal cutouts where you can pop the nuts in. Um, just as a note, these nuts, they have a nylon side, which basically locks the nut into place so they don't come out with vibration. So you can, if you look carefully, you can see there's a round side on the top and it's flat on the other side. You gotta make sure that the bolt goes in from the flat side to the nylon, instead of nylon and then flat side, because otherwise they won't lock properly. You might pop out the nylon part of it. So. Yeah, so with these nuts, you shouldn't need a thread locker or anything. So we're gonna pop these into these, this guy. And the bolt goes in from this way. So make sure the round nylon side is facing up towards you when you pop these guys in. Yeah, so they should go in like that. You'll find another bag with uh, shorter M5 screws. It should be the only other M5 screws in this part of the kit or part of the bag. So yeah, they look like this. And you want to thread them into this side here. 
and just bring them in far enough, but leave a small gap where the uh, screw, before the screw touches the body of the nut, um, because we're gonna. Oops, yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna get to using this later, but I'm gonna finish setting these up for now. How's it going? That's what you brought me today. Yeah, so as a side thing, um, sometimes they pop out as you saw just now. Um, I usually put like a piece of masking tape over top to keep them from falling out. Oh, nice. Yeah, you might not need the tape, but just just a throw it out there. I believe these uh, the kit will come with an extra one, maybe. Depends on how generous we're feeling. <laughs> yeah, I think I only need three of these for the actual assembly, so I'll just put the rest of them aside. So, yeah, so we have our our uh, robots done. We have our Acme nut locking nuts done. So move on to the next thing. So our next step is to start putting together the Z-axis uh, motor mount. For this, you'll need the, the aluminum piece as well as the 608ZZ flange bearings. You'll put them sandwiched in like this. And these are symmetric on both sides, so it doesn't matter which direction you go in. The next thing you'll need to do is uh, get the lead screw. So those are in the drag chain. Uh, so yeah, um, we need to get the drag chains and pull out the lead screws from here. And the shorter 200 millimeter or 220 millimeter screw should be in the uh, in this package. Okay, so two long lead screws we'll set aside for now. And one shorter lead screw. So the first thing we'll do is to put the one of the Acme locking nuts onto the lead screw and thread it in. And you probably want like maybe an inch or an inch and a half uh, in first. And then next, um, you'll slide it into the hole here, like that, as you can see. And then the next thing you'll do is grab a coupler, which are going to come in a set of four in this little bag. So they look like this. And uh, you'll see one side has a bigger hole and one side has a smaller hole. Uh, it's hard to mess this part up because you can't put this lead screw in the smaller hole. Uh, but yeah, you'll just pop the top of the, put the coupler into the lead screw like this. And then use your M3 Allen key, which comes in this baggie. and tighten the coupler on. Give it a twist, give it a tug, make sure it doesn't go loose. And then now you'll see we're gonna sandwich the coupler, the bearings, and this Acme locking nut all together so that 
you'll make this beautiful sandwich. Uh, as you can see, I did not tighten it enough. <laughs> no matter how many times you've done this, I guess nobody is infallible. I'll give that another try. I'll use the uh, other side of the Allen key so I get some more leverage. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's see, give it a twist, give it a tug, push it all the way in, make the sandwich. Okay, that's pretty good. So let me just scooch and double check I got everything. Oh yeah, so um, what's really important is that you only tighten the one that tightens the lead screw. If you tighten the one that's at top, you might crush the aluminum and you won't be able to get your motor on. So only tighten the one with the shaft on it. Yes, yeah, Scott's pointing to himself saying, I may have done this. Uh, yeah, so from this step, what you need to do is you're going to uh, kind of twist the lead screw so that everything is uh, sandwiched together and tighten the, uh, the little set screw here so that it keeps it in place. And um, later down the line, I can show you guys how to uh, uh, do it even tighter um, because basically what you want is you don't want any play in the back and forth this way. So it basically constrains itself when it's attached to the Z axis. Right now, there's basically no up and down movement. There's a little bit of back and forth, which is okay. Um, so yeah, we can add a little bit of more tension later. Cool. All right, so moving on to the next step, we'll get to the XZ axis gantry subassembly, which will be with this big chunky part, uh, as well as uh, all our V wheels, M5 25 millimeter bolts, the washers, and the eccentric nuts. So, yeah, we'll grab the uh, Dowler and V wheels here first. So basically, we're going to put a bolt through the hole of each V wheel like this, but as you can see, it doesn't go in, right? Um, if it's getting stuck, there is a, sh a shim washer inside the middle that might be off kilter. If you take a, the M3 Allen key and kind of shove it in there and then spin it around, it'll center the washer so that you should be able to fit it all in. So, ta-da. The next thing you want to do is scrub the washers, washers, washers. And ooh, make sure that we have it sandwiched in together like that. It, so we have we do the bolt, the V wheel, and then the washer. And you'll see when we assemble the uh, it onto the gantry is why this is important. And uh, maybe this is a good time to shout out to these uh, fancy M5 screws because they have um, a washer and a locking washer, which will help prevent things from vibrating loose. So you can see washer, lock washer, and bolt, and yeah, that's, they're called SEMS. Okay, so um, I'll just like put all 12 of these together, I guess. So, da, da, da. All 
another really random small tweak that we've made in the kit recently, maybe not super recently, but recently enough is um, we're actually using higher uh, grade washers. Um, what I mean by that is bec uh, they're technically harder washers because what we found is that when you use them with the where the eccentric nuts go, uh, they kind of bend more. Uh, and so the harder washers kind of help prevent that. In most cases, unless like unless people are cranking down like a gorilla, um, it doesn't really matter. But people do crank down on them like gorillas. So, uh, you know, we're watching out for the gorillas, you know? So another random factoid is that um, we used to have these issues with the inconsistency of the V-wheel uh, shape and diameter. Um, and so if you go on our blog, I write about the, the, the saga of the V-wheels or something like that, where we had to like get a bunch custom made from China and source more from like all these other places. Nowadays, they're all custom made uh, to like a very, very high tolerance. So theoretically, we shouldn't have those type of issues anymore. Um, but V-wheels generally get a bad rep because there's all these inconsistencies. And so we kind of had to take over for um, a lot of the production process and the quality control of this type of stuff um, so that, you know, we give the V-wheels the love they deserve. Okay, well, those are my 12 V-wheels. I guess we'll move on to our next step. Put all these knees back. All right, so let's grab the XE gantry here. Take off the plastic wrap. So as you probably have recognized, we try to leave a lot of the assembly process to the customer because it saves money because um, you don't have to pay us to assemble it. But the XE gantry is special because we assemble it because we have a very special process of making sure that uh, they're made up so they don't bind, they move smoothly. We have like these like torque like screwdrivers and we have this like gauge plate and all that sort of fun stuff. So uh, yeah, but yeah, once you get it, just make sure that it's moving fairly smoothly. So we're gonna start putting the uh, Delrin V wheels onto the gantry. There's a lot of holes on this plate, so you kind of have to make sure you're putting them in the right place. Uh, yeah, so in our case, we have um, these, we're gonna start with these two holes right here, and then we'll put the eccentric nuts on this side, but we'll start with these two. This is where you're gonna need the um, wrench, the wrench and the M5 Allen key, Allen key. Um, yeah, so let's grab those. So yeah, so I'm gonna put the V wheel on the back of the plate, like so, and then grab more of these M5 nuts that we used before. And uh, put it all together like this. I'll get another guy here, another M5 nut, put it on the other side. And take your take your Allen key and 
your wrench, and we're going to use the back side. Well, I guess both well, back is only whichever thing you consider not to be the front, <laughs> uh, but it's going to be the smaller side. You can uh, throw on the wrench like this, and then screw it in. Yeah, there you go. You probably don't need to tighten it too crazy, uh, but you should. You should see there's a. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a the the lock washer. You want to make sure it gets crushed, so that it doesn't vibrate loose. Okay, moving on to the next part of this step. Uh, we're gonna grab the eccentric nuts, which are these guys. They're kind of like the uh, M5 nuts, but you can see that they have a, a bore or, or like a, a bore there. And then if you look down the center, they're eccentric. The, the center of the threaded hole is eccentric, which makes it an eccentric nut. Or they also call me an eccentric nut, but we don't have to get into that today. <laughs> Um, uh, as, just as a sanity check, make sure you have the V-wheels on the back, not on the front. Uh, because, you know, I never do stuff like that. Um, so with the eccentric nuts, you're going to put them in these two bigger holes down here. Um, and you'll know it's the right holes because the bore of the eccentric nut will f fit into the bore of the, the thingy here. Um, it might be a little bit tight, especially if there's still paint in there. So give it a little juice to fit it in. Let me try to get it, get it in where the camera is. There you go. Yeah, these tolerances are pretty tight. This hole has to be 7.12 millimeters. <laughs> yeah, so you'll see these, these nuts go into this hole. And then we'll get more of the Delrin nuts, uh, sorry, the Delrin V wheels and toss it on the back here. So um, this isn't part of the assembly manual specifically, but I just think it might be good for us to point it out. Um, so the point of the eccentric nuts is basically to um, change the spacing of the V wheels in and out. Um, we use them because either the tolerancing of the hole spacing could be off, the V wheels might wear out over time, um, the rails might be changing in size. Um, so that's the point of using them. However, when you first start putting stuff together, you want to make the, the wheels as far as apart as possible, just so that when you start putting it together, it's a little easier and then we'll kind of clamp down on it. So it's, it's uh, pretty easy to tell whether they're out or in, because with the way that they are now, you can see that the top of the, sorry, the the bolt is closest to the top or like farther in together. So what I would do is use my wrench and then turn this roughly 180 degrees until the bolt is kind of sitting at the bottom. I'll do it on the other side too. So you can see here, now they're sitting all the way to the bottom. So yeah, you can do this right now. You can do it at a later step. Um, doesn't really matter, but I just figured I would point it out. All right, so we have the four V wheels put on now. We'll move on to the next step. Let's start putting on the first robot 
onto the z-axis. And this will go on in the back right here. So we need two more 25 millimeter bolts. And let's pop them through. Yeah, and fun fact, we try to make, as you can probably tell, we try to make the whole machine assemblable with M5 25 millimeter uh, bolts. So you're gonna use them a lot today. An important thing for me to point out here is do not tighten the bolts down too much. Um, what can happen is the threads on the nut can deform if they are too tight, which will cause your lead screw to bind. You should just need to tighten them until your locking uh, washers are compressed, uh, but, but just do it very lightly um, or just back them out a little bit. When we do the testing, we can make these adjustments later as well. So yeah, I got the, I got the, uh, what do you call them? Delrin nut put on. I'm just gonna try to line it up a little better. Straighten it out. Okay, that should be it. So the next one we're do we're gonna do is uh, put the another robot on the back, which is for the x-axis to go left and right. Um, specific for the 48 by 30, we're gonna be mm -hmm. using the bigger nut. So I'm gonna go find the bigger nut, which is this guy. As you can see, they're slightly bigger. Um, and you'll want to put the M5 nuts on the back the same way. So something else to point out, these XZ gantries come with multiple sets of holes. So if you're going from a 30 by 30 or a 12 by 30 to a 48 by 30, you'll be able to use the same hardware. Um, in this case, we're gonna use a outs two outside holes basically to uh, bolt this in. Uh, but I believe you want this on the left left side. Actually, let me double check. Should be on the right side facing this way on, on this one. Uh, look at the instruction manual. I believe it has to go on this way because uh, the uh, if you have a dust shoe, it'll be on. It'll be on bolted to the other side. So two M five bolts put onto the back here or the front here. And once again, um, make sure these are snug but not too tight, just so that you avoid not crushing the uh, threads. on the back. All right, so the next thing we'll do is to mount the Z-axis motor mount to the X-axis gantry. So it'll be a XZ gantry assembly. 
Um, yeah, so start by threading in the lead screw from the top into the, uh, the Delrin nut on the Z-axis. Okay, there it is. Uh, yeah, so the Delrin nuts, when they are new, they can be a little bit uh, stiff. Stiff to get in. So, you know. All right, so there you go. Ta-da! So yeah, if I turn the coupler here, you can bring up the Z-axis. It should move fairly smoothly. And then we have two holes here to put two bolts through. So I'll do that. Yeah, I remember the old version uh, of this used to be made of plastic and uh, they were they would bend. Uh, the new version here obviously is made of aluminum, so it's a lot more stiff. So it's one of the contributing factors on, we, we didn't recommend people use spindles for the old version, but with this new version, it is possible to use spindles because uh, it is a stiffer overall assembly. Um, but that's a whole other discussion. And if you're just starting out, I don't recommend using spindles because they're very complicated. Take it from a guy who's gone through the motions. But uh, we do also have a blog post that I've written that you can uh, learn more about. Okay, give these a snug tight. Now we have this beautiful assembly, solid, moves quite smoothly. Oh, and uh, the assembly manual shows a small little thing that you can do as well. Um, if you lose, if you want to make sure that the lead screw and the Delrin nut are like all lined up with each other. What it, what we can do is just loosen these two bolts, move it back and forth by hand a little bit, and then tighten them back up again. And that'll basically uh, let it settle into its position. Uh, so I'll just do that very quickly. So yeah, just move it a little bit and tighten these. Perfect. All right, so next we're going to put the router mount together. So this is a router mount. Uh, most, the, the standard size is 65 millimeters, which is the size that works with the Makita router. Um, we do also sell a 71 and an 80 millimeter, which are good for the Dewalt, the Bosch, and 80 millimeter spindles. Um, so yeah, you can check it out if you want those. Um, but the Makita works really well. So that's what we generally suggest. And they all by default come with the CT5. Back in the day, we let people select like, do I want it at 65 or an 80 or whatever? Uh, but the trouble was they didn't know what they were choosing. So they'd come back and be like, oh, I can't use this. 71 millimeter, I need a 65. So now you have to get the 65 and then buy it separately because other, you know, the, the number of times we had to just help them figure out the router mount situation was, was way more and almost everyone needed to get the 65 anyway. So yeah, anyways, so um, there's two screw holes right here. 
Um, and then this kind of bolts on from the front. So I can show on this this angle, like, like this. So just grab two um, M5 bolts and thread these guys in. And these don't need to be tight right now because uh, we're not gonna need them tight until we actually put the routers in. But if you don't want them to shimmy around, you can put in the uh, bolts all the way. And it doesn't really matter which direction they go in because they're also symmetrical. Um, and these router mounts also come with two threaded holes at the front, so that uh, if you want to mount if you want to mount accessories and things like that, they're they're there for that. So the way these go in is you have your z-axis here, and then you put the router mount from the front, and then there's four holes at the back where you can throw in the four, uh, four bolts, basically. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Just as a side note, once you have the machine together, if you move the Z-axis all the way to the top of the travel of the machine, you can access the, the bolt holes for the uh, router mount. So if you need to tighten or loosen or take it off or something, you don't have to take the whole machine apart. Uh, the old version made it a lot more difficult because you kind of had to take the axis off to do those type of stuff. But Chris, our wonderful CTO, cleverly gave us the room that we all deserve. So out of the whole assembly of this machine, you're probably the safest off to uh, crank down on the uh, bolts on the back of the router. Which I will do once I get all four of these in. Okay, now we have this beautiful XZ gantry assembly with the motor mount and the router mount all put together. And that concludes part one. Let's move on to part two. So I'll set this aside. So uh, yeah, part two is for the y-axis gantries. If you're assembling the uh, 48 by 30, um, we have a different uh, plate because we need the bigger holes for the y, uh, sorry, the, the bearings. And the um, because these are used for the same ones used for the extension kits, there's also an extra set of holes to, um, depending on which uh, English is hard, depending on which rail you're using for the y-axis. Um, so yeah, uh, they'll say EX down here, so they're quite easy to identify. First step is to put the, the, the view wheels on the plate. Um, something that's really important for me to point out is they need to, they're gonna go on the machine like this, so one set of view wheels has to point out this way, and the other one has to point out the other way. So don't assemble them all on the same side, because I haven't done that before. It hasn't wasted my time, you know? So uh, let, we'll go ahead and start putting the, the wheels on. Um, for the Mark II version with the new version of the rails, which is... If you're using this type of rail, you'll use the holes 
that are furthest out from the plate. If you have the old version, which are those angle aluminum things, you'll use the inner ones. So uh, just need to make the distinction. So yeah, we'll start putting them together. Also, just as a check, you should make sure that you have the washers on the V-wheels. Like, you can do go double check on the XC gantries as well. If you don't have these washers, they'll rub against the plate and it'll set, uh, it'll make the uh, gantry not sit in the proper space and then it'll be a bad time. So, yeah. Another thing you might notice is that the eccentric nuts were on the bottom of the, for the uh, XC gantry, which is the better place to put it because it doesn't affect the, like the, how do I say? The weight of the, the weight of the machine isn't pressing against the adjustment wheels. However, for the Y gantries, we were kind of forced to put them on the top because you can't really access them um, when they're on the bottom. So just a fun fact on why that is the case. So yeah, same deal with as the XE gantry. use the wrench and the allen key to tighten everything down. Okay, so I have one, one done. So I'll make sure that I put the next set of V wheels on the right side. We're almost through the tedious part of the assembly, which is all these little components. But once it's uh, once we get all that out of the way, the rest of it should come together pretty quickly. Okay, looks like I didn't mess this up. So that step is done. The next thing we're gonna do is uh, put another set of robots on. Um, so the robots need to go on the same side as the V-wheels. And um, they should be centered to the uh, Centered to the uh, the the wheels. Let's see if I can get this right. Okay, so they should sit on the top. Top two sets of holes. And once again, uh, don't do create. Don't go too crazy on making these too tight. There you go. And I'll rinse and repeat the process for my other side. Oh, I should also point out that the sc screw should point 
to, to towards this divot so you can adjust the screw later down the line. Alrighty, so now I have a set of Y gantries assembled. Okay, jumping back to the assembly. Um, next, we're gonna do the, um, so what the middle feet are is a set of feet that supports the Y axis uh, rails. So let me see if I can find those feet. So yeah, I think I uh, may have missed in the unboxing process the middle but they are in this in this box. I'm a silly guy. Okay. Mystery solved. Anyways, yeah, so we're going to use these middle feet and they support the the y axis. Yep, so let's grab our feet and some bolts. And we also need T nuts. Where can we find the T nuts? Yep, so okay. Now we're going to open up the yellow bag, which contains or tea nuts. And these go in so that the tea nuts sit like that. So tea nut goes on like this. It's kind of hard to see. Like this. And then a bolt will go in from the bottom and thread in to the, the nut. So our engineer Daniel actually designed these feet and he did something kind of clever, which is um, when you start tightening them, they'll sit on like these little nubbins and when you assemble them on the rail, they'll crush. So he had to be very specific on the size and the nubbins on the feet. So when you do this, just tighten them very lightly. When you feel a little bit of resistance, just stop because um, when you get to the, ex the next step, um, you'll see why that's the case. So yeah, I'll put these all in. Alrighty. So now we have all four with the uh, T nuts in place. Okay, so we're gonna slide in the feet into the rail. Uh, both of these are also symmetrical. See, there's a theme here. Can't really mess some of these things up, but you should be able to slide it to the front like this. And you can see very cleverly the the profile of this all sits nicely. So it doesn't really matter specifically the position, like in the, unless you're very particular about these things. I would say kind of eyeball it from how far it is from the ends and then just tighten them in like this. If you want to be really particular about this, you should be able to just use a 
tape measure ruler. Um, I think that in terms of engineering, the most optimal position will be where these middle feet are slightly closer to the middle than they are to the outside. Um, so yeah. Anyways, there's that. And I'll do the other process on the other rail. Where did I put it? Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, so this one has to go in like that. So make sure this time you need to put it in a particular direction. I'm gonna use the, uh, the other rail to kind of line things up. That should be close enough. So just, just for some more background information, the middle supporting feet makes the machine a lot more rigid. Um, if you look at a couple of other hobby CNC designs, some of them don't use any supports in the middle, which actually makes a big difference. So even though the long wheel is relatively inexpensive compared to some of the other options out there, um, just the fact that we have the middle supports makes like quite a significant difference. So even though these feet probably cost, you know, a couple dollars each, it that's one of the reasons why, you know, you get pretty decent performance for less money. Yeah, perfect. So yeah, now they should stand up on their own. I'm going to put on the gantries for this guy. You can kind of see how it kind of works itself out. So, yeah. Roll on the gantry. You can see it's sliding on. Um, and based on the position, this that end will be the front and this will be the back. So um, when you put these on, if you're finding that the, uh, the thing doesn't go on very easily, you may have to adjust the eccentric nuts. So as we were talking about this earlier, um, you have to turn the eccentric nuts out so the wheels are further apart and then they'll move along a little more smoothly. So in this case, I didn't do that on these wheels. So I'm just gonna quickly adjust these. There you go. This side is a little bit tighter. Cool. Okay, so uh, next step is to put on the end feet. Um, those will be those bent sheet metal parts that we pulled out earlier, these guys. So I'll grab them all. I'm gonna have to unwrap these. Yeah, so we're gonna take the feet and we're gonna take the M5 25 screws and we're gonna put the feet on each end, front and the back. So I'll come on the other side to do this. So on the rail, there is uh, two um, holes with threads in them, and those line up with the holes on the front. So you should be able to bolt these like so.
make sure to um, thread them by hand first. If you cross thread them, since it's aluminum, it's relatively soft material. Um, you may end up stripping part of it. Anyway, so we're putting together the feet on the front. So um, I'm not gonna bolt these down too tight because I'm gonna set them on the ends and then they can kind of settle into place. But yeah, so you just rinse and repeat for all four corners. So yeah, if you guys have seen the shop tour video, um, you'll probably see the part where we have the, we show the tapping arm, which we use for tapping the ends of the rails. I'll probably cut a cut to the, to the scene or something. Cool. Okay, so the fronts are okay. I'm gonna go to the back and do the back. You'll probably won't see specifically what's going on there, but I don't think you'll need to see too much. Back in, uh, back in the day with the first version, um, we actually printed all these feet with 3D printing. Now, they, now, all the, now all the front and back feet are made of metal. Um, but yeah, it took, uh, I think it took about 32 hours per machine to print. Now with the 3D printed parts, it takes six to eight roughly. So quite a small, uh, big change. Plus, uh, most people would agree using metal for their machines is generally better because it's more dimensionally stable. Uh, they don't creep over time. Um, some people might wonder why we're not using power tools for the assembly. Um, you could use power tools. Uh, you just run the risk of stripping stuff. Um, yeah, too much aga dagas can break stuff, essentially. So you're bas basically safer off doing it by hand um, because everything is designed to work with hand force screwing, if that makes sense. Hand force screwing, that sounds weird. Okay. Um, that concludes that step. I'm just gonna move the control box and the e-stop over for a second so I can get the full length of the machine to line things up. So what I would suggest doing when it comes to uh, making the feet line up properly is to not tighten it like Yeah, uh, my suggestion is not to tighten it down all the way uh, and then kind of use the uh, surface of your table to kind of let everything sit flat with each other. The holes are a little bit bigger on the front and the back uh, on, the on the metal feet so that you have a little bit of adjustability to make sure everything sits, sits straight. So I'm just gonna back off a little bit on these guys and then I'm going to push down on the rail a little bit and then tighten it back up again and this time I'll give it a little more, ju more juice cool so 
Ta-da! We got the front and back feet on this guy. I'll do it on the other one there. Okay, that's all good. Okay, so moving on to the next step, we're gonna start adding the lead screws on. So I'll grab one of these guys. And you'll need one of these for each axis. And you'll also need some of these bearings and the couplers as well. So what I'm gonna start by doing is, um, I'm gonna go from the back, but basically you put the lead screw in, sorry. Back here. Uh, you put the lead screw in like so, and then thread it through the nut on the other side. Try going in for the other end. I think we need to put on our budget one of those uh, wireless lapel mics, eh? Okay, so it was a bit tight to get this uh, lead screw in. So I loosened the two bolts on the Y gantry here and it seems like it's helping. And I'm just threading this thingy in. So at this stage, uh, you just need to put in the lead screw like this and um, you can bring it all the way back and make sure that you have some of the lead screw sticking out this way. The next thing you'll do is use the flange bearings here and pop them at the front like so. And then they'll sit in this pocket or this hole here like so. And then on the other side, we'll do the same thing. So I have the bearing on like this. Looks like this and like this. So um, sometimes I've seen people sandwich the bearings or put the bearings on the opposite side. Don't do that because they all need to sandwich each other and it'll keep it from moving back and forth axially. Uh, we're gonna grab another coupler here. And put it on the Put on the end like this. Same as the other step we did for the Z-axis. And then make sure we give it a good tighten on this side. And just as another reminder, make sure not to uh, uh, tighten the side without any shaft inside because you might uh, not be able to fit the motor on later, if that's the case. Alrighty, so I have the coupler on this side, like this. And now we're gonna go on the other side and we're gonna put a Acme locking nut 
which will basically make this all into one constrained uh, assembly. Bearing on like that. And then the Acme nut, sorry, the locking nut on like this. Thread this on. And then you want to uh, also kind of tension this and then put the locking screw on like so. And so now, once we have the motor on, the only, like, it won't be able to shift back and forth this way because it'll be constrained by the bearing and the coupler on each side. All right, so I just have to do the other side now. I'm gonna put this on the ground for now. Alrighty, well, now we're on to part three, which is putting everything together. Um, Okay, so now we're gonna get the X-Rail, which is this guy here. I'm gonna put this on the ground again. It's very heavy. All right, so in this next step, we're gonna be putting the drag chain mount. Um, you'll be finding that component in the uh, yellow bag. So that's this part here, and then we'll be bolting it to the rail, basically. As you probably noticed, um, the rails have a T slot, so we can use those to bolt things to it. And later down the line, if you decide to bolt other stuff, you can use standard T-nuts uh, to do so. So yeah, we'll take this and then we'll put the um, m 510s which is in this baggie here, and then the T-nuts for that. Yep, and then we're going to put the um, drag chain mount onto the rail here. I gotta turn the nut the right way. Okay, there we go. And then you can use your Allen key to tighten it. So um, when you're putting this, you wanna leave about a quarter inch gap between the edge of this to the, and the edge of the rail. Um, it'll line up with the plate later on. So later we can adjust it, but um, just give it about a quarter inch from the, the edge here before you tighten it. So yeah, there's that. All right, so this is a big part, which is to mount this to the rails. I'm gonna have to move some of my stuff around here. The instructions are saying to start with the left side, so we'll just do what the instructions say. Let's grab your left hand Y assembly. And what we're gonna do is bolt this rail to the Y axis gantry. So, it'll go on like that. And you'll see there's four holes for the bolts to go in. And then the ends of the rails, they're tapped the same kind of way as the uh, Y-axis rails. So, we'll start by hand threading them in and then bolt we'll bolt everything together. We're gonna do what Scott suggested and use the other side to help with putting the other side on. So I have the drag chain mount, so I just have to 
tilt it up like this. Good idea. Okay, there you go. Okay, now it's bolted in. It's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, so uh, when you assemble this, the edges of all this should line up flush, so you'll see if it's well lined up or not. All right, next thing, we're gonna put the XD gantry onto this big rail. So. Welcome back. That will go on like this. There you go. So now it should roll along fairly smoothly. And then I'm gonna bolt on the rail on the other side. Okay, we're back. With the magic of editing, we magically have these uh, MDF pieces because, you know, the, we needed more support under the feet, right? Um, yeah, so I guess we'll continue to chug along. So it turns out I should have put that thing on that side. I kind of messed up that. Okay, so now we're in part four motors and wiring. We'll start putting the motors and stuff, I guess. So, I'm gonna fix this first. All right, so, um, we're moving on to the step where we're gonna mount the stepper motors. The good thing about this is that um, the motor mounting is basically the same throughout the whole uh, like whole machine. So we'll start off by getting the motors and we'll get the hardware as well. And um, all four motors are the same, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up or anything. All right, so for this part, we need um, these. We need these uh, 35 millimeter spacers. Oops spacers and then we need the M5 50 millimeter bolts right here. So um, we'll start off by putting everything set up together. Oh and um, these are optional. We have nylon washers here. Uh, basically, they're to isolate some of the vibration, but uh, they're not really necessary. They're just like, you, know, you can choose if you want them or not. I personally wouldn't use them, but for the sake of uh, this video, I'll just use them. The nice thing about these washers also is that they're slightly undersized, so you can use them to kind of hold the, um, the spacer in place so you can see it doesn't fall out. Yeah, it's kind of, this this part is kind of a finicky part, but it's okay. So from here, you should be able to kind of bolt it in like this. And then there's four threaded holes where these bolts go. So we'll do that.
Alrighty, there you go. And then now that the motor shaft is inside the coupler, then we'll tighten the screw on the coupler as well with our M3 Allen, Allen key. Make sure that's that the screw on the coupler is fairly tight. One of the common things that uh, people run into is uh, the coupler is loose and then the motor slip and so it doesn't move properly. So there you go. So yeah, if you turn the coupler by hand, you should be able to now move the whole thing at the same time. It's cool. So I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side now. Should be fine. Okay, cool. All right, both sides are good. Now we want to do the Y axis. So we'll jump to that step. So we'll grab another motor. And then we'll grab the big coupler. And we'll also grab the um, big coupler and the big bearings. Big bearings. We'll put one of the big bearings in the gantry. I'm gonna put the camera on this side again. Put the big bearing in the hole here. And then put the end of the coupler on the motor. So, like so. It looks like we should be putting the uh, spacers on for the motor as well. Yep, and then we'll mount it to the side of the machine here, like the other. Um, which way should the cable go? It shouldn't really matter. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna point the cable towards the back. Oh no. Yep, put the, put the cable facing to the back, so it should be something like this. And, bolt that together. Well, good thing we have extra bolts in the kit. There you go. Now that's bolted in. And we will now shove the T12 lead screw in to uh, put that together. Ta -da. Let's see if we'll poke a hole through the wall there. Yeah, okay, so yeah, for this step, we'll need the, the uh, locking nut and the bigger bearing for the other side. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to do it.
And then, oh, don't want to mess up my microphone. Put it through. Lead screw. Okay, no problem. And then put the other end of the lead screw through the coupler. Yeah, so you gotta make sure this lead screw is pushed all the way in, and then the coupler needs to get pushed this way. So let's make doing that whole sandwich thing again. You're also gonna need the the T handle one, because we're gonna tighten the coupler to the lead screw, and you need a lot of strength to uh, actually make sure it grips on properly. So make sure to give it all of that elbow grease, I guess. I put a bit of tape on it so it doesn't pop out. Next we'll put the other side sparing and the Acme locking nut in place. Like this. And then we'll use these parts to sandwich everything together. Um, so Basically the point of this being threaded is that we can tension the lead screw to some extent. Um, the technique that we advise using is to take the bolt out of the motor side and then stick an Allen key in that spot so that um, it can push against the uh, spacers and um, you can tighten this side down. So we'll just go do that. So yeah, I gotta put the nut all the way on. And then with this being held stationary, we can wrench on the uh, wrench on the nut and also screw down the the uh, what do you call it? The set screw. And then it should give it a little extra tension essentially. Oh, I'm pulling it out on, I'm pulling the coupler out on that side. I didn't make this side tight enough, I guess. Yeah, so just give it a light bit of tension, tighten this screw down, and then you can double check if there's any play by moving the gantry back and forth like this. There's a bit of play because of the wheels not being tight, but there shouldn't be any play on the lead screw side, so it shouldn't shimmy back and forth there. Cool. All right, so now we can tighten the motor side. So we'll just swap, uh, take the Allen key out and put the, put the bolt back in. Okay, and then I'll use this to crank down on the motor side as hard as I can. Yeah, so this part, the metal for the coupler is quite rigid, so it needs a lot of force to actually uh, get it to tight, be tight. <laughs> okay, that should be okay. Oof. 
Very nice. Okay, cool. Alrighty. And then now we'll jump to the Z-axis mount. So we'll use the last motor to pop that on the top. How's my audience out there doing? <laughs> so this, this, the plug for this cable will point backwards and we'll just plop this on the top. Nice. And then screw everything down. So uh, just so I should mention, I usually don't tighten everything down like one at a time. I'll tighten a little bit and then make my way around the four bolts. Just evens out and make sure that everything's straight when you uh, put things together. It's kind of like uh, putting those wheel bolts on for your car. Star pattern. Okay, let's bolt it in and then we'll put the, we'll tighten in the coupler here. That's moving okay. This is all good. Cool, okay. All right, next step is to do the drag chains. So in terms of 48 by 30, you'll have a shorter one, which is for the Y axis, and then a longer one for the X axis. Let me grab the longer one. There she is. Ta-da. So these are all like modular. You can take uh, and remove links off. You can also take the front, the, the end links off too. So um, we'll just get this plastic off for now. And uh, we'll take these little tabbies out. They'll flip open and then you'll see, uh, you can start to fill the wires up in them. Um, I just need a tool of sorts. Okay, I'll show you guys the little latchy thing. So that, that opens up so you can put the wires in and then you can close them. There's a couple ways to open them. Uh, one way is to use a little screwdriver. You just put it into this slot here and then you twist and then they should pop open like this. Personally, I like doing this way the best because um, I feel like it's the easiest. So. Um, another way Scott showed me is to use the wrench and then you kind of lever it like that. So you can do it, you can kind of do it like that. Um, so I'm going to stick with the screwdriver way because I feel like it's easier way. So. Okay. I've now opened up all these ch drag chains, so yay for me. All right, and then we're gonna take these end links off as well. I believe you can just twist them, or you can use the, uh, what do you call it? Screwdriver to kind of lever them off. These uh, are kind of easy to break, um, so we, buy like a bunch of extra ones in case people need extras. Um, but the other way you can kind of get around it is if you drill a hole, you can make kind of like another end link essentially. Uh, yeah. 
so we're gonna put this drag chain on this axis. So we'll grab um, the T nuts and the M5 10 millimeter bolts. So on each end of the foot, there's like a hole where you can slide the T-nuts in. So uh, I will slide a T-nut in and kind of bring it to in between. Yeah, right here. It's good. We'll bolt the uh, front end link first. And uh, yeah, these you can adjust later on. So if it's not in the spot that you like, uh, don't worry about it too much. So that's not going anywhere. And then um, this is the opposite side of the link. So it's not the same. These are two different links. This, this is like front end. This is the back end of the link. This one will go on the drag chain mount like so. And we'll use this aligning piece basically to have it right where it needs to be. And I'll put a, another M510 bolt there. Okay, and then we're gonna do uh, a link for the x-axis side. So we'll use this type, we call it the pin type, I guess. But this will line up to the edge of the drag chain mount. So we'll throw in a, another T-nut. Down the hole. What? Go in the hole. Oh wait, I'm dumb. It's gotta go in for the other end because it's blocking by the blocking by those screws here. You did that on okay, T nut on the other side. Move it. Bolt in the drag chain mount. And then lastly, we're gonna put this one like so. And um, there is two spots for the um, the drag chain mount, but I believe. You can only really use one because uh, the bolts get in the way of each other. Plus you don't need both holes anyway. So I won't worry too much about it. Cool, okay, there's that. Moving on to the next step. Uh, each version of the machine, you don't need all of the drag chain links. So we're gonna take some of them off. So if you have, for the 30, 48 by 30 machine, uh, we'll take 13 links off the Y axis and then the longer X axis one will stay the same. So see here. Yeah, so this is the X axis. So this will be this, this is already the length it needs to be. And then for the uh, Y axis, which is this one, we'll take 13 links off. So we'll count one, two, three, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen.
Um, yeah, you can keep this for later. Uh, if you don't uh, amputate part of the drag chain, uh, the cables won't be long enough to reach the controller. So uh, make sure you do this. Now, if you um, are setting it up with the Makita router, this is where you're gonna have to grab that. Um, also, if you have inductive sensors, uh, since we already have the wires set up, it might be a good idea to set those up too. So we'll kind of do all the wiring up as well. Um, you may or may not have the inductive sensors, depend depends on if you order them or not. Um, I generally suggest that people don't use the inductive sensors until they're familiar with the machine. Uh, just because it causes more confusion uh, right off the bat. Uh, but if you if you have them, you can set them up now. So we will grab the router. And uh, there's the inductive sensor kit. No, no. It's a little chaotic here, eh? All right, let's open up this guy. Ta-da! Okay, so here's the router. You don't need this thing for the CNC machine. So, toss it. <laughs> All right, so um, we're gonna put the router in. And uh, you want it I'll just put it down pretty close to the bottom, but like maybe give it a quarter inch from the from the, the bottom. There's like a lip here that you don't want to clamp on. Case. Okay. And uh, we're gonna put the cable on the left side so it doesn't get in the way of the dust shoe later too. Cool, okay, that's in. Uh, and then we're gonna do the inductive sensors, which look like this. And then we have some hardware to bolt it in. It's kind of hard to get a good angle to show everyone what it's supposed to be. But um, there's a big hole right back here where the sensor can pass through. There, like this. Um, there's extra instructions on our website, so you should double check those instructions, but I'll just do it here and you can kind of see how it works. So yeah, so start with putting the nut in and then the uh, serrated washer thing, and then put that in there. And basically this blue nubbin is, should be maybe like one to two millimeters away from the metal when uh, the Z-axis is uh, crossing over the sensing part. So I'll just uh, move the Z-axis by hand up so I can kind of see how far I am. And then I'll use the nut in the back to kind of adjust how far it is from there. So yeah, I can bring it a little closer. It doesn't need to be exactly a certain distance. Um, there's kind of a range of the sensing distances. Um, as long as it's pretty close, it'll work. As long as it's consistent also, like it doesn't move or anything, then it'll be fine. It'll be repeatable. And then throw the washer here and then put the nut on the front like so. And then these will sandwich, the nuts will sandwich in the sensor and then we'll all be happy. This wrench also you can use to bolt in the, the nut at the back. There you go. Okay, you might need another wrench on the other side to keep it from spinning. All right, that's pretty solid. All right, so let's do the wiring for the um, 
the uh, router. So in the kit, there should be some zip ties that you can use. Um, this one, you can zip tie around like this and then it'll keep it away from it. And uh, you could double check if the travel is okay. We'll grab the... Yeah, so there's a, another baggie with all the zip ties and stuff. So we're going to do the wiring now. Um, we'll put the motor cable on and then we'll have everything routed through the, the cables. Okay, so here's the motor cable. We'll plug this in to the back of this on this plug here. And then it should all wire through the drag chain. So I'll grab the long one. And essentially, it should wrap around basically like this. So when it, the machine moves back and forth, it's gonna go, the drag chain is gonna go back and forth like this as well. So open the first link, pass the wires through like that, and I'm gonna close it, and then it'll keep everything together. And then I just keep feeding the wires in and closing the links as I go along. Let me just make sure I got everything. Yeah. So if you have the laser also and you want to do the wiring now, that might be a good option too. Uh, we don't have a laser here, so we can't do that, but um, you can check out the instructions and probably figure it out from there. This way, and um, yeah, you can clip the end of the drag chain into the other end of the drag chain, like the reverse of taking it off. <laughs> and uh, come on, you got this. There you go, and put this on. There you go. Nice. Cool. Yeah, so there's our first set of drag chains. And uh, we're going to use the extension cables and stuff for this guy. So the kit comes with uh, an inductive sensor extension, the motor extension, and then uh, power for the router extension. And in, the, in our case, we're going to use all three. If you don't have the inductive sensor, you don't need the inductive sensor cable, but you can hang on to it just in case in the future, you want them. Okay, so first thing I need to do is move this chain back 10 inches. So then I have enough space to put all the other cables. So I guess the instructions weren't 100%. So, okay, that's, that's probably about 10 inches. Now we're going to plug in all the extension cables. So that should go on the end of the induction sensor plug. And the motor cable will get this guy.
plug it in. And the router, get this one. So that can plug in like this. Ta -da. Cool. All right, so next step is to start setting up for this drag chain. So I'm going to take another motor cable and plug that into the Y, the X axis motor here. And then we'll grab the next drag chain, which is this guy, the shorter one. And we'll feed all of these cables through here. We're gonna do this and then leave um, all of this access outside and then pass everything through because um, basically we're gonna wrap it up and do some wire management. Uh, so essentially from before the end of the cable, the extension cables, we're gonna loop this through and then the rest we're gonna wrap up. So it should go something like, should be on this side. Oh, before we add everything to the to the drag chain, we're also gonna set up the x-axis inductive sensor. So basically, same process as before, uh, but we're gonna put the uh, inductive sensor on this hole here, and then as it comes up to here, it'll sense the sensor right there. All right, so same process as before. Throw on this nut to start. Maybe just like a little bit. The washer, slide this guy in. Alrighty. So from here, we need to be about a millimeter to two from the sensor. So I'm just gonna scooch over the gantry to the closer to until it's almost touching the end of the travel. It's a little tough. So you can probably move it a little bit closer. It's probably good. It's almost touching the uh, plate. And I'm gonna move it back and then I'm gonna bolt everything down. So wrenches again. Okay, there you go. So yeah, that's on pretty good. And then we're gonna toss this through here as well. All right, 
stuffing all that cables in. and then clip everything into the end. Okay, there you go. All right, now, so I believe with all these loose ends, we're gonna zip tie them up to the back. So let's check the instructions. Okay. So in the kit, you should also have these 3D printed parts that clip onto the back, which are right here. So these clips are pretty simple. They just go on like this and clip on. Oh, I did this wrong. Clip on like that. And clip on like this Daniel made it look a lot easier there you go okay cool and then we have zip ties inside and there's these two there's these holes in the back where you can slide the ends of the zip ties and then you can use them to loop the cables through. So we'll just do that for these zip ties here. Yep, and then we'll fold the, the cables so that um, they're all sitting. Probably should have made the extension cable come out a little bit more. It's pretty in there. It'll be okay. Just get everything in there. And then we're gonna wire the back Y axis bits and bobs. So grab the last two cables here and then put them at the back. There you go. I need to finish with this side too. I'm a little frazzled. Okay, let's finish up the drag chain part and push everything through to here. Nice. Okay. All right, so let's finish up with the wiring. So the you're gonna need the control box, which is here. The power supply. Here. And your e-stop which I've put someplace. And the e-stop, I'll open this up. All right, so the first thing we'll do is double check that the wiring for the power supply looks good. So we need the red cable to be on the left side, if you look at it this way, and the black to be on the opposite side. It looks like this one is okay. You also want to make sure that the the wiring on the motors are also the right color. They should be uh, 
blue, yellow, green, and red. So that one looks okay. Um, blue, yellow, green, red. Blue, blue, yellow, green, red. Yeah, everything looks all right. And then we're gonna keep, we're gonna plug in all the motors on the controller now. So I'll just come on. Okay, so uh, we have to identify which motor cable is for what. Um, so I'll just tell you guys what what goes where. So the cable that comes out of the drag chain is either going to be the X or the Z. Um, if it's the one with the nylon braiding, uh, then it's going to be the X. And then if it's the other plug, which has the PVC layer, that's the, um, that's a Z. And uh, if you look at the control box, it'll say which axis is which. So you just have to plug it in the right place. So this is the X, so I'll plug into the X. And just so you guys know, um, you gotta push it quite hard so that it locks in place. Um, if you don't plug them in all the way properly, then you can sometimes create a short or um, high resistance and it could burn out your plug. So that one is C. And then two of the cables that are from the back of the motor or back of the machine that's not in any of the drag chains. Those are both Y motor cables. Yeah, those are two, both Y motor cables. It doesn't matter which one you plug it into. They're both the same. Uh, so just plug in to whichever uh, seems to be what you desire. So, yep, those are all plugged in. Next, we'll plug in the... Uh, um, Next, we'll plug in the inductive sensors. So, how do I identify? So to identify which plug is for which, if you have the red, black, and yellow, this is from the extension cable. So that, that is gonna be for the, um, that's going to be for the z-axis. So put that, plug that into the z plug, z limit. And then the other one is going to be the x, which is the one right here. So plug that into the x. Wait, hold on a second. Sorry, this, so this, this one, this is from the extension, so that's from the Z-axis inductive sensor. So we'll plug into the Z plug. The one without the X-axis, uh, sorry, the one without the extension is gonna be the X-axis, which is the one right here. So we'll plug it into the X plug of the controller, which is right here. And the Y limit we haven't set up yet, but that'll go at the front, that'll go at the front of the machine here. So we might as well set it up now. So this is the bracket. This is the only bracket you need for the inductive sensors, but this will go underneath like this. I guess you can't really see it. They'll go underneath the rail here and uh, you can mount the inductive sensor. We have a screw and nut for this. So to assemble this, put the T-nut through the front of the rail. So it should go in like this, see it? bolt goes in like this 
So you can start by, I'm gonna move this up a bit. You can put the bolt in first and then slide this forward and then tighten everything together. It's kind of hard to see. We have more instructions online. So if you don't understand this, check the resources. There she is. And then you need the Allen key to put this in. And I would put the uh, sensor as far close to the front as you can. So I have it butted up right to the uh, foot. Same similar process to all the other ones. Put in the nuts, uh, bolt it onto the front, and then we'll use the, um, when we move the gantry forward, we can adjust where it's supposed to go. Um, it's a little easier once it's all wired up and you can move the machine by its own power uh, rather than kind of screwing this with your hand. So I'm just gonna put it in place for now uh, and then we'll adjust it right after. All right, so next we'll plug in the e-stop. And this goes on the top of the um, controller. It says power switch. So kind of hard to miss. There she goes. And you can see it says oops button because I think that's funny. Oops. We can also plug in the power supply. Power supply. And that goes in the back here. Yeah, I'm gonna plug in. I'm gonna plug in this to the ex extension. Cool. Cool. Okay, so we're on the home stretch now. Um, now we can plug it into the computer. We can start jogging stuff around. We can test it, and hopefully, I did everything right, and uh, we're all happy. So there should be a USB cable in one of these boxes and where would it be? I think it would be in the variable box. I will find it. Alrighty. So back in action. Um, yeah, so you need the USB cable and then we'll plug it into the uh, control box. We will do better wire management in a second. We just want to make sure it's working and test this out. So we're going to connect the computer and the cable all together. So I have the USB plugged in to the controller and then I have my thingy because I have a MacBook and then plug that in. You're also going to have to download Gsender. There's a link in the manual. So if you click on the link, you should be able to download the latest version. And we have uh, Windows, Mac, and Raspberry Pi versions available. So we'll give it a second to load. <laughs> Next, we'll uh, op open up the connection. And to turn on the uh, machine, we, you need to rotate the e-stop and then it'll turn on. And once it's on, you should see a red light on the controller right there. Can you see it? Yeah, there's a red light on here. So it'll tell you if it's on or not. And if all goes well, I should be able to jog the machine. Let's see. Oh, 
You see that? It's moving. All right, so now that everything's moving relatively smoothly, uh, we can start the mounting process. If we go back to the instructions, let's go to the mounting process section. Uh, we're gonna adjust the eccentric nuts, so I'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, where's my wrench? Um, okay, so um, basically adjusting the eccentric nuts is all the same for all the eccentric nuts, at least conceptually. So I'll show you how to do one or two and then I'm sure you guys can figure out the rest. So right now, that's this is where our this is our eccentric nut. You can see there's a difference between um, the regular nuts and this. So the way that you want to adjust it, you test out how much uh, looseness there is. You can see Basically, I can turn this easily by my finger. What I want is that the tightness between the two is high enough that it's difficult uh, to basically rotate it. I'm gonna move this a little further so I can get past the drag chain. But yeah, so right now you can see it's a little bit loose. So I just need to tighten it a little bit. So to do that, I'm gonna put the Allen key here, and I'm gonna use the other side to basically tighten it down to um, a little bit further so that it's clamping further down. Um, Chris has a, a, a good video on how to do this as well. And so tighten this down, double check how hard it is. And you can see it's basically impossible to turn by hand. So I'm gonna loosen it a little, open it up just a slight amount until I can just barely turn it. Yeah, that's pretty good. So you can see, I can still turn it, but it's almost like solid on there. The excess axis has the eccentric at the bottom. So I'm gonna move on the Z axis so I can get better access to it. And I'll check how loose these are. These are pretty loose, so same process, stick the Allen key in the back. And then keep tightening the nut until you're clamping a little stronger onto the X-axis. Yeah, that's pretty good. And do the same on this side. There you go. So yeah, if you do, if you make it a little too tight, um, it might be adding a bit. Oops. It might be adding a bit more resistance to the movement. So just double check if everything moves smoothly. You could also double check by shimmying around the machine. If you see any like looseness, um, you can probably tell if it's a, uh, for the V wheel or not. Doesn't need to be a hundred percent exact everywhere. Um, as long as it's like taking up all the slack, you're okay. Um, so if it's if you're not 100% sure, don't worry about it too much. Um, with a little bit of experience, you should be able to kind of get an idea on how tight it should be. This, this one's good. This one, these one, these this side is actually pretty good already. The next thing we'll do is uh, to adjust the Delrin nuts. So. There's two things to do, tighten, to tighten these back down if they're loose. So I'll just tighten them until the washers are squished. And then this screw here, basically, um, basically with a nut like this, the, by turning this screw until it hits the plastic here, it pushes the two halves separate there's threads on this side and threads on this side so it takes up the slack within the thread 
over time, the threads will wear and the nut will wear. And what this does is take up the slack as it wears out. So every once in a while, I'd say like once a week or something, I'll just double check to make sure these are uh, taking up the slack. And every 2,000 to 3,000 hours, uh, these are supposed to be replaced. So I'll show you guys how to adjust these. So first you wanna see if there's any looseness by pulling the gantry back and forth. So there's very little play because, um, well, we, this is a brand new nut, so there's very little play. Um, so all I'm gonna do is keep turning the nut until it hits the other side of the nut. Cause right now we have a gap there, right? Might even be able to do it by hand. There you go. So yeah, no play there. That's good. And I'll do the other side too. Cool. And then lastly, we can double check the X axis as well. So I'll move the Z axis, Oop, the Z axis so I can get to the nut. Okay, so I'm gonna use this Allen key because this one is too short. I don't like the way that they we designed that. It's a little annoying. Luckily, these don't need to get, the X-axis with the T12 doesn't need to get adjusted as much, but it is, it is something to do. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. Tighten this. As far as I can. Can I bring it in like this? No. I'm gonna make a complaint. Last bolt here, tension this, that's good. Next, if you want to put the shields on, we have in the kit these little covers. So if you don't want your hair to get caught on, um, we, you can put these little uh, nut cover things, these nut cover things on both sides. Okay, cool. All right, part six, mounting to the table. All right, so the first step is for us to move the machine all the way to the front, and then we'll bolt one as a reference point, and then we'll jog the machine back and forth, and then put the screws in so that the other side will line up with each other. So let's uh, jog. So we'll move it all the way to the front first. I'm gonna move it back a little bit so I have a place to put my laptop. So in this case, I'm gonna line up the corners with the edge so that this is like a straight reference point. And then we'll drill these in. Thank you. All right, let's screw these guys down. So yeah, the kit comes with these uh, screws and so you need a square Robertson to drill them in. And we'll do the back side as well. Part of it's done, and then we'll screw in the middle feet.
think there's an apple. Cool. Okay, so now we're gonna do the right left side. So we'll bring it all the way to the front, put it in on the corner, all the way back, and then use that to line up things. Cool. All right, well, our screws are mounted in. Okay. All right, so we now have mounted everything. So, um, there's a couple of extra little mounting things you can do, which is in the instruction manual. Otherwise, the basic part of the machine is pretty much built, we can do a quick test run and um, call it a day. <laughs> cool. Well, so that concludes the assembly of our 48 by 30 long mill CNC machine. Um, as I said earlier in the video, um, feel free to use the video as a way to kind of see how things are put together, but make sure to use the official manual to cross-reference um, because that'll be the most up-to-date. And uh, yeah, happy making.